if anyone who's trying to get into a product role at a at an amazing company be it nas academy or be it googles of the world or amazons or, or like microsoft you'll have to be very disciplined and diligent about preparing for that role everyone is dancing at 10 am you would you wouldn't believe i i have like videos that's the all hands <laughs> monday morning meeting everyone dances are you that person who can give this manager or this head of product that peace of mind you have to build that conviction during the interview process how would you do that if you know any product manager just seek some guidance from them one to one Uh, so hey guys, today we have with us Rajat Bansal, who is one of my seniors at NUS MBA, and is also a product manager mm. at NAS Academy, which is a very creative and innovative company run by NAS Delhi. And today he is here with us to share his experience of being a product manager, and how did he transition into it, and how you can make your career in product management. So hey Rajat, welcome to the channel. But we'll get started after the music. So hey Rajat welcome back to the channel today we'll be discussing about product management but before that let's have an introduction of yourself so please tell us what is your career and academic background amazing thank you amit for having me it's a pleasure to be here and uh, okay some something about myself i started my career a few years ago back in 2014 i graduated as an engineer in india from a from a tier 2 college uh, in in the north of india and uh, after that it took me a few years to realize what i really wanted to do a- a- in in my career and in about 2017 i found my first product role so i was there in a health tech company in bangalore for about 2 2 and a half years and then i moved to singapore to work at a, a media and entertainment company and now i'm working at nas academy as a product manager i was hired 5 months ago uh, as a first product manager at uh, at nas academy and incidentally my first role as a pm back in 2017 was also the first pm role of that company so it's it's a really exciting role to be in and given that the companies that have always worked at are at early stages uh, it's always exciting in at those at, in those at those stages so would love to talk about them in in case we get to <laughs> thanks for the great introduction rajat uh, you came to singapore to make a fresh start and it's always hard to land your first job even though you had a background of product management and you landed your first job at nas academy so tell us how did you prepare and how was the experience of interviewing for nas thank you for that question amit i think it's a combination of a lot of things my experience back in india as a product manager was one thing but after moving to singapore i realized that it's a completely different ball game when you are applying for a product role at an international company where audiences of my product would be global and the kinds of things that i would want to know to build a product for such an audience is something that i did not know before during my mba in singapore i interned at a company called rakuten wiki that gave me the exposure of understanding how media and content is consumed globally i think that had a big role to play in my application towards uh, nas academy in addition to that i think there was like a lot of preparation that i i did over two years it sounds a lot it it was like a lot but i think if anyone who's trying to get into a product role at a at an amazing company be it nas academy or be it Google's of the world or Amazon's or, or like Microsoft, you'll have to be very disciplined and diligent about preparing for that role. It yes. cannot just be that you just walk into an interview without really knowing what the company does, what the competition is looking like. Like for example, for NAS Academy, I did read through a lot about how the company was formed by the founder Nasir, why they form founded it. and then understood the space that they were working in and what other players or com- what other companies are building around the world building that understanding was key for me in the interviews because i not only came across as a person who knew what i was talking about but also i was able to confidently put my foot forward that saying that my experience 
of the over the past three four years will culminate into an understanding of what products I can build at NAS Academy, and that conviction needs to be there if I'm applying for a early stage PM. And being the first PM at any company is not not going to be easy. That that's a given. You have to you, set you, the culture also. Uh, to be honest, in the product vertical. You have to set the culture. It's you're not only having to set the culture. You also receive very less guidance mm. because the founder might or might not be a product man. Might not have been a product manager or a head of product. He a founder re, want, probably wants to get off the product and look at bigger the things. Picture. Yeah. A big, the bigger picture, and like hand over product to someone else. I think it's an also this question also brings me to a point to discuss about how I got my first role. Back in 2017, when I was when I was working on a side project to build a product for a certain industry, I did not really know what product management was. i did not know what building a product was i only knew that okay there is a certain problem that probably can be solved using an app <laughs> so let's design an app yeah i just went ahead looked for what what tools you designers use to uh, to kind of build apps and i found there's a tool called sketch it's free i just downloaded and started like watched a few tutorials and started designing an app use that app or sort of like a prototype and showcased it to a few a uh, few of my potential customers then i bumped into a friend and told him that oh this is what i'm doing and he's like bro this is product management and uh, this is this is a field by itself like it's a discipline like people yeah. practice and i'm like oh interesting this is something <laughs> i want to do <laughs> really and that's when i realized that okay if this is something that i want to do which industry do i want to kind of go into and that's when uh, i bumped into one of my seniors who was uh, running this company called docon it was a health tech company where we were building for doctors and it in- instantly made sense for me to kind of explore this space because there's a there's an impact at the end of my product like whatever product i will build will go go to doctors and then in 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 the end uh, affecting the patients or impacting positively to the patients So I felt okay. Maybe this uh, is something that I want to try. And interviewing for that was also not easy. I mean, wh- what do I go and say that? Hey, I've uh, I can do product management for you, Mr. Founder. Get get aside. <laughs> no, right? He 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 would want to be convinced. Mm. And that's when I realized that okay, I need to be really sure about what I am going in for. Then this the first thing that I did. researched the competition there's one thing that founders love yes <laughs> if the if the other person knows about the competition then they think that oh this person can probably uh, bring some edge person probably brings an edge understand the industry so there are there are companies like librate one mg i really dug into the products of these companies and found issues that mm-hmm. they were not trying to address so went back gave this interview that interview went really good because i could kind of talk about a lot of aspects not only the competition but how maybe i see this company's product to kind of grow i think this this formula kind of has worked for me yeah adding on top the understanding of an mb the understanding that i got during the mba really thinking through uh, how to solve big level problems it's i mean in the interview you could face a question like and this has actually happened with me uh, at at during an interview with rakuten the product manager they asked me design a time machine and define the metrics for that time machine and in that situation this weird question doesn't make sense but if you do not know how to break down that question into smaller pieces and then collect it back to form a good answer you wouldn't be able to kind of nail that and it is a common question to be asked such a question <laughs> to be asked during a product management interview so i think it's a coming back to your question i think it's a lot of uh, things that have to come in place and it's a lot of discipline rigor and a lot of practice that can help you land a job anywhere like the job of your dreams is need to kind of work for it that's uh, commendable uh, rajat you very well <laughs> summarized the long answer <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's, it's still uh, it is a human answer because everybody makes their everybody takes their first step uh, you took it in 2017 somebody may be taking in 2022 so it may help them so now uh, coming to uh, a bit of uh, details into nas academy also because yeah. it's such a unique company and it has been founded by uh, if i'm pronouncing it correctly nasir Huh? or Nusair. we call him yeah this has but we call him nas delhi so yeah yeah that that guy has an amazing following so it would be an injustice if we do not talk about what kind of culture he creates in the company and what is it like to work with him on a daily basis so nas academy is an offshoot of nas delhi team right and nas delhi primarily is a media company and media company being in the entertainment space has a completely different kind of a culture than you would expect at a tech company nas academy coming from such a culture inherits a lot of it from nas delhi so i would say it's a fun culture to be in monday mornings are my favorite people come in at 10 am in singapore time and there are people joining from france barcelona dubai which is 6 am on in on their side yeah everyone is dancing at 10 am you would you wouldn't believe i i have like videos that's the all hands <laughs> monday morning meeting everyone dances that's amazing On you have to call. be really extrovert to work in such a company then <laughs> and they, they will call out like they'll just spotlight you on zoom and they'll be like okay you you have to do macarena now be like oh. okay <laughs> <laughs> so, apart from being fun i think it's a, a very aggressive culture we we do believe in like working super hard and playing super hard like my onboarding in nas academy is that you're working in nas daily it's not nas weekdays <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's it's not nine to, it's not nas 9 to 5 it's nas daily so That's... i think it's a lot of a lot of values that we have at nas academy come from how the sire has envisioned his company to be we are aggressive we i think compared to my previous companies we we ship things build and ship things from a technical standpoint 10x faster than i would have seen like we're building things every week i think it's also the state of the thing like we we are still very early stage just raised series a still haven't found that product market fit that we want and being fast and agile is is the ask of the time i think we we are trying to do that and having said that i wouldn't say that it's a there are a few things that also like play a lot important role here it's an it's an it's a not it's not an established industry yet we're building yes. tools in the creator eco- economy this this industry did not exist 5 years ago really and this industry we feel will be the future will like 5 years down the line if this will be like a household thing to to talk about creators i i think it's already household in a way but people don't realize it and being in such an industry where the industry itself is trying to establish itself we don't consider ourselves industry leaders but we we would still be kind of driving the industry like i believe we are driving it somewhere like we have a role to play in it being in such a place where there are other players trying to build some some things and everyone's trying to figure it out you cannot be left behind really right and it is competitive and if you're not aggressive you will someone else will build and build a strong edge or a strong moat yeah then then you don't have a place to years down the line in an so early stage in knowing industry, that yeah, yeah in an early stage industry first mover advantage plays a big role uh if the one who starts early and does it well uh, can gain a lot of audience then uh, the people who will be catching up uh, then the company who will be catching up so first mover advantage so you may have to create innovative products over there so that brings to my next question so you can give a combined answer what kind of products you make at nas academy a great question i think before that you mentioned that first mover's advantage helps right yeah. PayPal had a first movers advantage in a way, yeah. right? In fact, X. dot com had a, yeah. a first movers advantage. Now, 
we have Stripe and Venmo leading the charge now, right? Yes. They did not have first movers advantage. So even though, okay, it, they were like a decade apart. Venmo yeah. is a PayPal company. Oh, Venmo is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's in a in a rough company uh, industry landscape. It is not always easy to stay in the lead. And if you've not built an established uh, lead from everyone else, someone else will come and eat you in a couple of months. And Absolutely. you'll just be hanging, questioning where did you do wrong, and you won't even find out the answer for that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So that's why I said if you have to do it first, and you do, you have to do it well uh, to stay yeah. on the top. So yeah, coming to the next question, like what kind of products do you make to uh, do it first and do it well? Amazing. So we have multiple products. Uh, all of them are, even though like we have three different products, all of them are. within the education space within creator economy so for anyone who's like who will be listening here uh, might not even understand what the creator economy is creator economy is you have probably heard about influencers right and anyone who's uh, built a following on social media is an influencer we feel creators is sort of like a transformed term for influencers but creator is also like a umbrella term anyone is a creator a ceo is a creator because they have built a company uh, a tattoo artist is a creator because they create tattoos right a visual artist or a photographer is a creator even though they might not have mass millions of following on online so we feel that these creators who have established a uh, an expertise in their fields have something to teach to the other people about how they did it or how they nail the things that they do or how are they like exceptional at the work that they do having a strong belief that these people can be teachers we are building a platform an education platform to enable these creators to kind of build courses live courses for their following for learners for anyone who wants to learn from them and we don't do it in a very traditional way we don't just build courses and put them online we build cohort based courses where we want to bring in more interaction how many times okay let, let me ask you a question how many times have you signed up for a course on udemy or a company like skillshare i have done it like multiple times because like one night i was feeling super enthusiastic i signed up and then maybe i watched a one one video two videos yeah how many times did, do i complete the course like it's not that easy to be so consistent and disciplined yeah with like learning even though everyone wants to educate themselves but learning online is not fun right yeah we're trying to change that as well so our method of learning is has like accountability and interaction built in the process so when you learn with cohorts like the batches of 50 people or 100 people around the world you will be accountable to yourself and this new batch and a few trainers that are there in your batch and that's how we enable education starting from creators facilitated by trainers and then students learn through batches if that makes sense so to facilitate that we have products for selling courses enabling learning on a platform and giving a platform for these creators to understand how their academies or their courses are doing on ground uh that's a, a very Thanks. unique set of products to be honest and you may not have a lot of competitors to copy from to be honest, because it's a new industry uh and i should not use the word copy i should use the word uh inspired. get yeah, get inspired inspired, inspired. <laughs> yeah get inspired from so yeah <laughs> definitely uh, it must be a lot more challenging than a normal product management job because you have n number of competitors and n number of products already available in the market if you are leading if you are in a leading uh, tech company or any consumer based company but here you are uh, here you you do not have a lot of competitors the industry is new so i would like to know uh, if you want to mention one or two challenges specific challenges that you have faced uh, while working in such a new industry for sure uh, amit i think there even though like there are a few players who are trying to do uh, what we are trying to do in different geographies like there are a few players in the america and uh, a few in india 
and i feel all of them are in in a similar state where we are trying to find product market fit for this new form of learning this new idea that anyone can be a teacher and doing it the right way that makes sense for the learner and for the business in a scalable manner that's the challenge here yes and finding that product market fit where our our courses if we launch a course we don't have to worry about whether or not this course will sell in the future right we want to be in a state where we launch a course and it sells yes <laughs> there's like enough people enough people are talking about it there's enough buzz around the world there's enough organic presence for nas academy that we launch a course and it kind of takes that hockey uh, hockey yes. shape uh, growth hockey stick graph and like this hockey stick yeah hockey stick graph that we talk about so we want to get there and i i strongly believe and i firmly believe that we'll get there there are we we have seen successes we have seen some failures with some of our courses but i feel we learning with every launch we learning with every product launch or a feature change with respect to product itself i would say we work like a typical e-commerce right right we have we have landing pages for products or courses then there's a checkout flow understanding conversion across these touch points is like a key metric for product yes. and doing and running experiments is something that's de facto we we change the layout we change the color of the button we move the button around and see how users react i i don't think it's a challenge per se but it's a good problem to have to kind of continuously optimizing the conversion on at every step of the flow and trying to understand how users will behave and it's ex- exciting you know uh, being a product manager at such a company always kind of i'll give you a, a example last night i went out with my girlfriend we went for a dessert at at a place in holland we here i there's a now there's a new thing with these restaurants right they don't really give you a menu they'll they'll give okay. you that this is a qr code <laughs> just scan and find the menu here and i first i went ahead and on the checkout i saw that there's a very simple apple pay button on my yes. iphone i've seen that button in different apps but i've not seen it so commonly present on websites we are a web based platform and instantly i realized that this was so easy it was so frictionless yes i just selected a few items double clicked and payment was done because my card was already enabled and i was thinking to myself why don't we do it <laughs> are you giving away your uh, next and this is <laughs> this is like a friday midnight Mm-hmm. uh epiphany that oh this is something that we should do to increase conversion and i think yeah. such things happen like in the morning i started reading up how i can enable it using stripe uh, we already have the infrastructure it's just like some effort we should do it spoke to a dev and then we'll we'll probably do it in the next few weeks i think that's the most exciting part so uh, a small trivia just last week i was signing up for one of your courses and uh, just before the payment page where i have to add the card details I'm like wait a minute let me just rethink on this <laughs> and exactly. that's where that's where i dropped out I, and the next day exactly. i received an email from one of your uh, uh, like representatives that you were very close to doing the payment why did you not sign up exactly But, these are the kinds of challenges yes because yeah. it's an abandoned cart issue right and if a lot of people are abandoning cart then that's a problem for the business and we are solving for the business so great talking to you rajat now reaching our final question which will be very helpful for the people who want to make a transition to product management or who are already product managers and want to uh, do great in their career so as a seasoned product manager what is your seasoned. advice yeah you are seasoned <laughs> i think <laughs> no, good to hear <laughs> yeah okay as an experienced product manager huh, what is your advice for people who are preparing or uh, doing advancing in their career okay so i've been sharing this with a lot of people like people do ask me even from your batch and uh, your senior batch people have asked me on how to prepare and often times i i feel that people want to get into product but they don't really know the background of what a product manager does so i think the first step is to really understand 
what the role of product manager is it's not as simple as oh somewhere between ux business and tech it's not as simple as that there are a lot of things it's an exciting role yes but first understand what is your skill set that you will be able to leverage on to build your career so for amit a person like you who has in, who has an eye for good content who has an understanding for tech it's like the, you are already two checks and you can build your path for everyone or others we'll need to kind of understand what is it that that can help them in their product career i started learning design i had some understanding of business tech is something that was a black hole for me and that i learned on the job so this was my first role but now i think in in singapore the ecosystem for product is a bit more international not as easy as it was probably in india back 4 years ago uh, you'll have to prepare a lot there are resources available online that can help you guide you through that interview preparation there are seven eight types of questions that you really need to understand how to do it's it's like i would say it's something like you would prepare for a consulting role you would do case prep you need to do case prep for product roles how would you do a product design how would you uh, improve a product what are the metrics that you would have for a product like spotify you need to think like a product manager and understand how these different aspects of a product role or a product manager's role work once you do that i think you are already like halfway there apart from that i think you can like to really strengthen your application or your uh, presence in an interview you need to build validation if if you've not done a product role in the past how would a person trust that you can Dude. you can be even like a fresher role like it's not you need to remember this a person does not hire you for your skills they hire you so that they can rely on this person and they don't have to be troubled by your work they yeah. can be peace like they hire you for their own peace <laughs> of mind always remember that so are you that person who can give this manager or this head of product that peace of mind you have to build that conviction during the interview process how would you do that people do it in different ways they they do side hustles they build products using low code there are tools available that do not require tech at all and they can, you can just plug and play different things google sheets zapier google apps build a product that solves a problem so validate that bring conviction to, to whoever is kind of interviewing you i think apart from that it, it's a lot about really understanding uh, which which company you're applying for you'd be surprised how many people i interview and they have no clue about what nasa academy does they'll be like oh you sell sell courses and then what they have no clue about creator economy they would don't have much idea about education uh, of how the industry has scaled i think doing your homework is the most important thing here and that can probably that's like probably the starting point and being like diligent about it and preparing for every for it every day would get you there i think apart from that i think uh, if you know any product manager just seek some guidance from them one to one that's that's <laughs> i know yeah. <laughs> just give me give me a sparkle here at the end right <laughs> <laughs> i thought there's something on my <laughs> on my tooth that's great i'll do that okay so yeah that it, it was great talking to you i had i really had a lot of fun talking to you and i hope the viewers also uh, had a learning and a fun journey watching this video so hey guys if you have watched the video till this point please subscribe to the channel like the video share it with your friends and also to people who actually want to make a career in product management ask them to watch it seriously and rajat any last thing you want to say peace these are just like functional elements of me being present in singapore but there's a lot of history to i think i <laughs> charger <laughs> <laughs> so hey rajat thanks for the introduction uh, so if i'm not wrong uh, why if i'm not wrong okay. <laughs> <laughs> so hey rajat uh, why did i say hey rajat <laughs> <laughs> peace peace फिर से नहीं हो गया हो गया अच्छा ठीक है अच्छा ठीक है अरे अब लेकिन हो गया हो गया आ गया ना उस वीडियो में